Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Ackley Bridge Season 5. I have to say, I just now finally watched it, and I have to say, this season was miles better than Season 4. Like, they went back to the roots and back to the format of the show, instead of it focusing on like three of the new main cast members and pretty much like not giving no character development and no screen time to nobody else they went back to the formula of you know incorporating everybody into the show well almost everybody except for three people <laughs> i still feel bad for them um not three um let's see no, 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 no. five people i feel bad for them they still got no screen time um and stuff like that but like and even though they still is on the same 20 minute format um uh, runtime it still feels like season one two and three where it's like an hour somehow they managed to cram in multiple storylines and story arcs into like 20 minutes and do it effectively except for episode one episode one was kind of rushed and a little bit all over the place and so I am very, very, very pleased that this show went back to its roots and became good again. But sadly, the damage was done and, you know, this was the last season. And it's quite a shame. Some people probably got turned off by season four and did not come back for season five. And because of that, you know, it got canceled. Also people miss the people from season one through three because they're all gone now except for or the younger cast they're all gone except for like chloe um what's her name um is it raza um Haley, and somebody else um that's young i'm not that thing that's the only young cast and everything everybody else is like gone that was the only one that came back and everything so people miss the original folks and you know i don't blame them like i miss them too you know what i'm saying and it's weird seeing that um like they had a ball in the last episode it's weird seeing the group shot of like this brand new cast because it started with a completely different cast and now it ended with them and in that regards it just don't feel right but I'm so glad that it went back to the heavy hitting drama what it used to be. They still deal with teen drama aspects, but they do it in a very mature kind of way, in a very dramatic kind of way. And their personal lives at home are very dramatic and hard hitting. However, one thing I noticed, they don't shout. Something this show is known for, it likes to shout. When it gets to their hard, dramatic stuff, they shout a lot, which makes it more impactful. Here, it's more quiet there. And it was a little bit refreshing, because, you know, after, like, four seasons of shouting, you know, it does take a toll on your ears and stuff. However, they still tried to format this show for teenagers see what they did for season four and also season five is they changed the time slot it came um instead of coming later at night i think they said it came more in the afternoon in between the simpsons and something else to make it more teen vibe and everything they said it worked for season four but i doubt it <laughs> and so it's kind of weird that you know you have this teen show that's around the time all these other teen stuff is on but the subject matter even though some of it is teen based in high school angsty is still very hard hitting dramatic and it's probably a little bit too dramatic for a lot of teenagers so they probably should have kept it to that later time slot for more like older people and stuff plus the people who grew up with this show as a teen they started to get older so you know it just is what it is and stuff and like i remember um nas's mom she became an executive producer in season four which probably explains why her character had more to do for the adults than most others and all the adults get equal screen time as well and i made a little bit mistake in season four she's not pregnant she just took a pregnancy test 
So I'm assuming she's not pregnant because they never brought it up. But, you know, Haley was pretending like, you know, it was hers and she was pregnant. So I would assume Haley would have been smart enough to see the plus or minus sign and know, you know, if they're like, you know, pregnant or not. But, hey, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And so, like... Also, this show went back to the roots of having, like, you know, a blended cast of, like, you know, the Pakistanians and the white people, and also having them have conflict with each other, which was the basis of why this show was created in the fictional school of Ackley Bridge College and stuff. We get back that whole racism of, like, you know, one white character being racist towards, like, you know, the Pakistanian people, and, like, typical Ackley fashion. Um, it gets rushed through like pretty quickly and stuff like that. Towards the end of the series, everybody gets a pretty good finale and everything. I thought one new character they introduced, he's just kind of there towards the end and it's kind of like whatever, you know what I'm saying? But like for the most part, everybody ended in a pretty good way to where they can just like move on without the series continuing and everything. I was very shocked to see one cast member from season four get written out in season five. I'm not talking about Nas's cousin. Um, I'm talking about Kayla. She only showed up in three episodes and then they wrote her completely off. And it's weird because of the simple fact her mom went with her, but then her mom returned back to Ackley only for Kayla not to show up. So it's like, who the world was she living with? <laughs> also, what's really interesting is the character of uh, Marina. They recast her with Megan Morgan this season. And because last season, the character of Marina was not done correctly. She started off as hateful and racist, only to be wiped away like an episode later for her to disappear, be like the Queen Bee, disappear again, and then for her to be the nice girl in the finale. They did nothing with that character, and they completely recast her this season going on. She is a lot of the main focus of this season. Um and she has she goes through like a roller coaster of like story arcs and everything. And it's to the point where you really hate her in the beginning. But then when something bad happens to her, they force you to like her and then all of a sudden she becomes nice. And it's a little bit of a cheat, but it does make her into a better person and stuff. But her character is still very complex. It's just really weird how once they got rid of the other actress, then all of a sudden they started to focus on her. And as for Frizza, they improved her so much that I love her this season. I did not like her whatsoever in the last season. She was too complex and too shady and stuff. But they really, really worked to make her a um, well-rounded, better character. For the most part, most characters don't really seem like past characters. A few do, especially the new one that they introduced. But for the most part, even though they do recycle some stuff again, it still feels fresh and new as opposed to just like slapping a, br a brand new face on like a character and their plot story arc and stuff. Now, a former rapper actor by the name of Ashley Walters, he directed the last five episodes. And those were some extremely good episodes, especially the last two. And so he did a really amazing job directing this stuff. And it's good that he got his life in order because he was involved in the incident many years ago. And yeah, he has a real talent for directing, but I have no idea who he is. I've never seen him in anything. He was in Speed Racer. And that one television show, uh, I think he gets starred in The Musketeers, but I've never seen him um, in anything. I have no idea what their names are. They are never given a name. They're always in the background and they're popping in and out almost every scene. They never really say nothing except for one of them. And that's about it. They always wear all black and they don't wear the school colors. I don't know why that is because it's never explained. But I just thought it'd be nice to like, you know, mention them and stuff because they're literally in so many scenes, but they're always on their phones. I still can't say her name. Roshana and then Spud. 
still, once again, they do absolutely nothing in the show. I am so pissed. They was introduced very interestingly in the third season, and then they completely dropped the ball in the fourth and the fifth. They are literally background characters, always appearing in the backgrounds. And they're forced to play rugby, which gives them something more to do where you see them a whole lot more, but they still barely say anything. Spud says a bit more than um, Roshana, but Roshana, basically the only thing she does is like she gets hurt in the middle of the game and gets taken out. And then you have Nas's brother constantly checking her out and liking her, but they never talk to each other. Other than that, she does absolutely nothing and she doesn't say bro no more, which really sucks. And then Nas's brother, his friends always saying bro. I'm like, no, you can't steal her, bro. That's her phrase and everything. And it's really disappointing that these two did absolutely nothing in the season once again. Raza, my God, she did nothing this season. Once again, she is reduced to a background character. She appears in three episodes only, always in the background, and she says only one thing. She's only given 30 seconds of screen time at the most. Like a combination of them all maybe a little bit longer but for the most part it's less than 30 seconds this is quite a shame especially how she is the sister of the original main character they bring up nos and everything and talking about how she's an oxford graduate how it's only been two years since her season uh, how did she graduate so fast Salim, I believe how you say his name. He is the brother of Nas. He's actually given a bit more screen time this season and a bit more to say. However, he is the school mascot. He starts off not really saying good stuff. Basically, there's like this hot or not app and he's rating girls and the new teacher doesn't like that. And like, you know, he gets a pep talk from his mom's boyfriend and Rashid and it's like yeah he gives some like condoms and stuff it's weird but at least he has something to do this season <laughs> Haley Haley is given a whole lot more to do than that of last season um but she still doesn't have no real story art basically she's the entourage of that of marina which is weird because marina should be younger than her and stuff they also put her on the rugby team gives her a bit more to do basically and she's even she even says a whole lot more than she did last season basically um this one episode that she's basically just like loud and nauseous but the worst thing she did all season because she's always been that that mean kind of person but she went too far this time when marina is like assaulted by this one dude she gets pissed because that dude's friend wants to break up with her and so she's blaming Marina and everything. But she's one of the people who finds evidence and is able to, like, you know, help get that guy in trouble. Which, then she later um, apologizes to Marina. I could not believe how they made her seem and how they made her just, like, attack that girl. And it was really disgusting and everything. But, of course, they turned her character around. And, ooh, she can dance. When she was at that party, like, she can dance. You can tell that girl be going to some parties and stuff when she was in school and stuff. Kayla, I could not believe the lack of screen time and the one story arc she had this season. I could not believe she was only in three episodes. She was one of the main trio from last season and she was literally the main girl i could not believe she went from being the main girl to the girl who gets written off i don't know why she was written off i don't know if it was her that wanted to i don't know if it was the writers but she is a gone and i could not believe how they wrapped her story arc up basically in like the first episode she really doesn't do nothing and and well other than like you know her mom having like a, a shopping addiction and stuff and they have to live with ever um shed or shield i think his name is ever shed or something like that 
and then it's like you know her I then her big story arc is she wants to have sex with Johnny teen they're teenagers they haven't even graduated high school yet they're only 17 and that's the story arc they gave her but I will say at least they did it in a very I don't know really what how to say they they did it they, they it was some good writing how they did it they made it very realistic and stuff as opposed to weird and stuff but it is kind of humorous but her main thing is she feels like she's ready with johnny now you know me i hate when teens do stuff like that on shows i don't like it it promotes sex and i just don't like it but like they're learning about it in school and not only that but like she doesn't know what to do so she watches porn and it's kind of turning her off because you know the um oh come here daddy type thing you know and it's off putting to her but she doesn't know what to do so she's trying to learn that way which is a very realistic thing so i'm glad they incorporated that in the show Basically, she's nervous because Johnny has been with a lot of girls. And so he takes her to this very fancy restaurant and then he puts her up in the hotel. But then it's when the awkwardness comes. He, he can see she's nervous and she's trying to imitate what she saw in the porn. Talking about come here, big daddy and stuff like that, which really turns him off. Because of that, she feels embarrassed and doesn't want to do it with him no more. Then later on, they talk it out and then they do it off screen. And I could not believe that was her big story arc. Then her mom comes in talking about, are you and Johnny having sex? And very casually, she's like, yep. And she's all like, using protection? Yep. And she's all like, well, I got some bad news for you. I found the job in there, thing, but it's in Ireland. Yeah. So in about the third episode, they have to move. Marina does not want to move and decides she's going to stay with her dad. But, you know, Kayla's not going to stay with her dad because she don't like her dad. And her dad is not seen this season. Her and her dad really didn't talk last season. And so you would think, because this thing, she loves Johnny and Johnny loves her. He is very devastated. It's even to the point where she tell he proposes to her and she tells them you know you can't afford to take care of us and we don't have a job and we haven't even graduated high school yet marriage is the last thing we need to be thinking about then johnny does the unthinkable but she doesn't know about that and johnny has changed his life around all because of her and he's devastated she wants to leave he is devastated she's just sad and you think she'll be more devastated especially with all they went through last season but it's just like she just has a sad look on her face almost like the actress just didn't care to like emote and probably because she was being written off and stuff and so like you would think she would have been upset but she's not and she just drives off and everything and what makes it even more awkward is that when her mom comes back because of what happened to marina like you know Kayla is nowhere to be found. Like, where is she? Who is she living with in Ireland? Why is she still going to school there if her mom's not there? And that don't make no sense. So I think there might have been something the writers are probably like, you know, let's just like, you know, um, try something different. Or maybe she wanted to leave. Who knows? Mr. Evershed, his role is reduced this season. He falls on that trap of being like the teacher or head teacher who makes one mistake and trying to help a student out then he's basically majorly in trouble to the point of almost losing his job and screen time and so basically what happened is that like he's still dating marina's mom and he helps them out a lot but then it's like Johnny needs money to pay for rent and also food. So he takes some of the school money and gives it to him. They find, um, this one dude finds out 
um ken ken is a major butthead from like season three on up to this season and ken is kind of like the superintendent like assistant who's there at the school to make sure everything goes like firmly and everything smoothly and he's always writing stuff up and he really does not like ever um shed and so when he finds that out ever shed like job is totally on the line because of this, he really doesn't have that much interaction with Johnny this season. And like, um, what is it? And, but towards the end, he makes a big powerful speech about how he's there to help the kids and how the school is the sanctuary and everything. And like, you know, if you're gonna fire him, fire him. But they decided not to fire him and he keeps his job. And he's still dating uh, Marina's mom, but of course she lives still in like Ireland and stuff. Kyle is the younger brother of that of Marina. He's also just now got Juvie. He is a bad seed. He's kind of like the new Jordan and everything. He's racist, very racist and stuff. And he does not like Pakistani people whatsoever which causes a lot of conflict with people in the school. He has a huge chip on his shoulder and he's very aggressive and stuff. And, but you know, he loves his sister and his father who he lives with. And so him and, oh Lord, I cannot say her name. Um, Kinsey, um, those two clash um, until they start to bond. They bond over a dog, see? His father breeds dogs, and he was gonna give um, Sami, um, Sami uh, a dog, and but the mom would not allow that. But then it turns out that his dad also puts his dog in dog fights. This upsets Cal to the point of he needs like you know, um, Kaz Kaziz help, and so like. Um, she helps him in, like, in a very good way. In fact, you see her hang out with him a lot more than she does her own son. And so those two start to bond. But whenever he's around her with the dad there, he has to act racist and stuff. Other than that, he helps her try to like pass this exam, but she won't take like the answers. And other than that, he's just like a bad seed who's kind of like coming around. But then his story arc kind of just ends like that. And it's kind of odd. And they should have developed him a bit more towards the end um, with his niceness. Similar to how they did like, you know, Jordan and his brother, but they didn't. Speaking of her, Kaz Kaznis, I can't say her name. Her and Rashid are doing very great and it's still going strong. And her major story arc, other than Kyle and everything, it turns out that Ken has found out that she has not, like, you know, she's not qualified to do what she does. I believe now she's a counselor and she started off in the cafeteria, but then later on became a school counselor. But apparently she didn't take some kind of class, like, you know, to be a counselor and go to school for it. So she's about to get fired. But if she passes her standardized test, then you know she'll be able to teach so she studies really hard and she even takes classes at school with the students which is kind of weird to see and so other than that like you know Kyle gives her the answers to the test but it's for like the last um standard test and everything but she ends up I'm assuming passing in a way and I'm guessing that you know she gets to stay um, while everybody wants to kick Kyle out of school, she is the only one who is like standing up for him and everything. And it really helps turn him around slightly and everything. She hangs out with Kyle a whole lot more than she does her son. But she gets mad at her son for uh, objectifying women and everything. Other than that, um, that's pretty much all she does this season. Chloe. Chloe gets a heck of a lot more to do this season than she did last season. She's a lot more of a nicer person than she was in the first three seasons. And like I told you before, she did absolutely nothing last season. And what did they make her do this season? Well, they make her join rugby, the debate team, and they make her fall in love with that of Frizza. See, they could not figure out nothing to do with her character in the last season, so they decided 
decided to make her bisexual this season and not only is she that but like i'm trying to think it was something oh she's still part of the entourage of like you know what's her face uh marina and everything marina is very rude to her and she's about two years younger i don't know why she gets bossed around by her and so that's very annoying but i am very happy they finally gave this actress something to do because like i said before fern um, the actress, I would not even know about this show if it was not for her. And so I'm really happy they gave her something to do. And another reason why they probably turned both her and Frizza into like LGBT characters, because last season Frizza was not in um what's her name? Chloe never was either, even though she got kissed by Nazim in like season two or three, but she completely was rude about it and stuff. The reason probably is because every season has had a strong LGB, um, I can't talk, LGBT character, multiple ones. In the first three seasons, there was three of them. By the fourth season, even though there was a lesbian character, they did absolutely nothing with her and she did not date nobody. And they had a drag queen, but they didn't do anything with him that season. And so they're probably like, well, crap, dude, we need like an LGBT person. So they probably made those two, I'm assuming, you know, um, a couple. So basically, she's always had a crush on her, but never said anything because, you know, Marina is so mean. And so um she's part of the rugby team and debate team when frizza has to lead the debate team because of her father she gives frizza a trophy um of one of hers and everything and they share like a kiss but frizza asks like she's not really all that interested and frizza even said you know she's never been with a girl before but chloe is very cute well in a way when they go to like the party they like make out and everything towards the end of the season they're holding hands and you know they start dating johnny and queenie the roma people and so they're travelers but they travel no more they've actually settled down in the house those two how they're able to get a house and they're only 17 years old and she's only like 16 heck if i know i don't live in england and so like queenie is given a lot more to do and say than that of last season she literally plays the supporting role to that of johnny um the sister figure but she's not happy she's not happy because of the simple fact she don't want to live in the house she likes living in trailers and she likes traveling she likes the way of her people and he changed his life for that of kayla and stuff and she's not too thrilled about that and she gets even more pissed because see what happened was when johnny was trying to keep kayla in his life he knew that he can't afford this house and everything now queenie lives in the trailer outside he lives in the house but they cook in like you know the house and stuff like that the house has like no furniture no nothing all of a sudden it has furniture and lights why because of the simple fact when johnny was looking for a job he decided to get a crooked job he decided to sell drugs and everything queenie when she finds this out she is furious and told her that you know grandpa would not want this life for you and everything she's trying her best to turn him around and make him like straighten up but he sells them anyway and she's furious knowing all this new stuff is like in the house. But Queenie's main thing is kind of like um, antagonizing that of Johnny because she's all like, you know, you're turning your whole life around for Kayla and the girl's about to leave you and everything. She's not going to marry you. She's not going to give you kids, this and that. Queenie, on the other hand, tells him, you know, she wants to travel and stuff. She's tired of living this lifestyle and she wants to go back with the rest of the people. And they're about to leave and go someplace else. Apparently, from what I read, travelers, Roma people, they just travel. They travel from one area to another getting like jobs. When that runs out, they go to like another place. And so she wants to go with him, but you know, go with those people. But um, Johnny wants to stay. See, after Kayla leaves, Johnny's whole thing is still once again music. Johnny has turned, like I said, he has turned around a lot since the last season. He's not mean no more. He doesn't solve everything with his fist. 
and he's trying to fit in with everybody else. And so this season, because Ever um, Shed isn't going to be his mentor this season, Mr. Um, Rashid is and everything. So Mr. Rashid is teaching him music. It's like they don't have a music teacher. First ever show, now Rashid is teaching him music. And they want him to go to this one talent show because they think he has the ability to make it really big with his music. So we see him practicing all season with that. He is still friends with Riza, and he helps her out in this one episode um, when she's dealing with her father. But they no longer try to like get together and stuff. And after that, he no longer tries to date anybody. And so when it's time for the big talent thing, Queenie comes in to be all like, you're never going to make it. You're like, you know, nobody's going to accept you because of who you are. We don't fit in with these people and all this and that. So he was going to blow it until Rashid came over to talk some sense into him. He goes to the audition and Queenie goes there too. And he wows everybody. So it's at the point where now... He's gonna like, I guess, go like um, travel on tour or something like that, doing music with these um, I forget like what this um type of musical school or something like that, and so he's gonna leave Queenie, but Queenie's gonna go stay with Rose, his ex from last season, who he was supposed to marry, and they're gonna stay in the house and try to make things work out while he travels and do the music thing. And that's really his big story arc. So I really liked how they turned his character around. But it was weird knowing he wasn't the main focus of the season after he was last season and stuff. And for the most part, you don't really learn nothing about his people no more. You learned a lot about them last season, but this season, you kind of really don't. I guess because, you know, he shifted away from that lifestyle and stuff. Asthma. She is the brand new teacher at Ackley Bridge. And she is like a feminist. She's a protester. She stole this religious head that she prays with and she loves praying at school. She is very devoted in her Muslim faith. However, she has a dark side to her. She has demons and she is an alcoholic. And so because she has demons in the bottle, it goes against that of her religion. But one of the people she bonds with is Frizza. She is like the mentor to Frizza and tries to help Frizza out the best way she can. She tells Frizza, you know, you need to get, like, get out of this city and join the debate team. It could lead to a political cl um, career and everything. Frizza was on the verge of winning until her father took ill. <clears throat> and, you know, so like... But one thing, like I said before, asthma does is like drink, drink, drink. Now, Hassan, the um, PE teacher, those two co-coach um, co um, the rugby female team and stuff. And she's very competitive <laughs> and everything. But he was smitten with her at first sight. He was just like in love with her and stuff. And so he flirts with her here and there. But she's very headstrong and doesn't really accept his flirting. But then she takes a picture of those two together and send it to her father. Her father has been on her case. Her father is rich and he wants to move back home to London. And he's a very snooty man and they don't get along. To try to cope with her father's like crap and everything, she just started drinking years ago. And she cannot stop whatsoever. When Frizza comes to her house desperate for like, you know, um, to be consoled and everything, she is drunk and pushes her away. Then those two get into it. Basically, um, she brings up something with Frizza that pisses her off. And Frizza tells everybody, oh, you're such a hypocrite. You're so religious, but you're here getting drunk and everything. This causes um asthma um asthma to like you know lie on frizz talking about oh she's lying you know i only had one drink and blah, blah blah stuff like that hassan literally realizes that she is lying to him when he smells her drink because she literally poured a whole thing of vodka in her soda this causes a problem between those two as those two are now starting to bond and like you know um, she realizes she does have a problem. Her and Frizza patch things up when she helps Frizza's dad not um, take his own life. 
And, you know, she tells the song that, you know, she's not playing around. She really does like coming and everything. He said he's been in love with her since, like, you know, he first met her. And at the end of the season, she goes to an AA meeting and admit for the first time to everybody that she is an alcoholic. She's a really interesting character. You think at first you're not really going to like her because of the way she kind of like um, talks to people and stuff. But she's really like compassionate and stuff. And it's just sad that she has demons in the bottle. But she is overcoming it. And, you know, that's a really good thing. Frizza is my new favorite character this season. They improved her leaps and bounds from the fourth season. She's no longer shady. She's no longer causing mess. She's no more of that wild child. She's a whole lot more calmer and everything. However, she's constantly fighting with Marina this season. Marina just does not like her. But, you know, she ain't gonna back down. She's gonna stand up for herself. And she befriends that of Chloe, which she doesn't understand why Chloe is friends with Marina. She is sad to see Kayla leave, but those two don't really have that much time together. And when those two depart, they're not really like sobbing or anything like that. But, you know... She is there, even though Marina's mean for her, Frizza is still there for, like, you know, Marina, like, offer her a cake and this and stuff like that and somebody to talk to because she knows what's happening with her mom and, you know, and all this other stuff and Marina's just being mean to her. Well, like I said before, she bonds with Chloe and they start, like, a relationship. However, the main thing that Frizza does this season involves that of her dad. See, last season I told you her dad was a drag queen and he's also gay. And it caused problems without her mom. Now, her mom only shows up in one episode and their relationship's a whole lot better, but she lives with her father. She takes care of her father. And I always said, it was kind of weird how they had a drag queen on the show, but when he's in his drag, he's happy, but when he's a man, he's depressed looking, and they never explored that last season. Well, it turns out he is bipolar. And so she takes care of him and everything. Problem is, he does not want to take his medication. It is very difficult to have a parent who is like suffering from mental illness, especially when they don't want to take their medicine. As a kid or a teenager, you know kind of what's going on, but you really don't. And it's a very frightening thing, you know? And many people have dealt with that. And so when she's at the debate and everything, he is there. And she's winning it until he tells her that he bought an ice cream truck, which she tells him he cannot afford. He kind of like, you know, because he wasn't taking his medication. So she had to take him on and out of there. And so next thing you know, he shows up with his ice cream truck dressed in drag. That's how he's going to do it. And she is really upset because she knows he has no money to afford this. They're barely making it as they are right now. So when she goes to um, Esma's place, this is when Esma shoes her away and she sees that she is drunk. And this causes a rift between those two. Now, when it comes to the relationship with that of Chloe, she decides to just like not be interested in the more because Marina tells her that Chloe don't like you like that. So that really hurts her feelings and Chloe has no idea why. When they're at like a party, this is when she, um, Marina decides to confess and everything. And then her and Chloe, of course, get together. Now, when it was time to take that standardized test, Frizza had to leave and everything. Why? Her father calls her. He's really upset and talking about how he hates how he ruined her life and stuff like that. And she shouldn't have to take care of him, but he's going to make everything better. And he's at the bridge where she likes to go to. She realizes something is wrong and Asma takes her to, um, Asma takes her to like, you know, find him. He is on top and he just wants to end it all. She is upset and not know what to do, what to say. But Esma is there and thankfully she talks him down, telling um, him that, you know, she's an alcoholic and it's hard going through life and, you know, disappointing people and stuff. After that, Esma takes care of her, but her father does not want to go to a mental ward. 
he does not like those places so they have to call the police and when he goes away he gives his daughter the worst side eye you could ever possibly get but then you start seeing him about to tear up because you know he he's really hurting and stuff you know bipolar people they don't want to be the way they are there's just there's an imbalance a chemical imbalance in their brain but thankfully medicine does make things better and so she goes to visit him and everything and he's doing much better but of course he can't take care of her but she is still staying in his place which i don't understand why she's not at her mom's we don't see her sister at all this season and so pretty much that's like what all she's been through i'm so glad they went back to their roots made a very compelling story and turned her character around because in the last season she, you want to root for her because she's friends with kayla and johnny and stuff but she was so unlikable last season which now brings us to the most shocking character of them all marina I am very shocked at all the screen time she got this season as compared to last. In the last season, she was barely there. I would probably say, even though it's an ensemble cast this season, Marina is probably the main focus of the season. And it's still very shocking she is the main, main, main focus because she was barely there last season. You would assume like you know but um that like johnny or like frizza would be the main focus but they kind of share the co-focus and everything but the way they wrote marina this season is exactly how i wanted them to write her in the fourth it would have been so much better and stuff so when she did turn around to this good like person then it'd be more convincing and stuff so basically Marina is still a queen bee. She's mean, she's rude, she's very icy. And she causes a lot of trouble for a lot of characters in here. She has it out for Frizza. She does not like her at all. When her mom has to like live with like, you know, the principal dude and all this other stuff, her mom calls her the B word and everything because Marina was just being very rude the moment she saw Kayla, her mom, hanging out with Frizza. And Frizza doesn't understand why Marina hates her so much because she didn't hate her last season. But of course, remember, Marina is still racist and she's even homophobic and everything. So that could be it. Now, at this time, Frizza wasn't really like bisexual or nothing and stuff. And she even said she's never done anything with a girl, but she supports the LGBT. And so, like, she still has her entourage and stuff. And so, we see that she's very vindictive. And she even makes fun of Frizza on that little, like, are you hot or not app. And she puts an embarrassing photo of that of Frizza. But Frizza stands up to her and, you know, and the whole school, like, applauds her and stuff. Which causes her to be pissed. Now, she has daddy issues. We see her father this season. He is the reason why her and her brother are racist and stuff. He's a slump of a man, like a slug of a man and a scumbag and stuff. That's how he starts off. He's like a really bad like um, person who like has dog fighting and stuff like that. And But he disappoints her. Every time he's supposed to show up and make time for her, he blows her off to play poker and make some easy cash and stuff. And it really gives her daddy issues to the point where she craves attention. One way she craves attention is through her body with sexuality. She always dresses very inappropriately. And she loves taking tons of selfies with like her cleavage out and, you know, dressing like a hoochie mama and stuff. She loves the attention she gets from guys online talking about she's hot. And this causes her to create kind of like an OnlyFans type account where guys pay her money to see revealing pictures of her. And she does that for the remainder of like the season while still being mean to everybody. And I mean, very, very mean. And so, but then we see, you know, the stuff she's having to go through at home with that of her father and her brother. So you start to feel a little sympathy for her, but not much because she is mean. 
And so the, the website starts to get a little creepy for her because somebody's all like, oh, I recognize you from school or I know and all this other crap. And they want her to start like sending more like nudes and stuff and which she just deletes her profile. She realizes it's getting a little too out of control, right? So they make her join the rugby team and she's constantly arguing with like you know her teammates and making fun of them talking about how spud can't catch and her and frizza are still just like button heads and stuff she causes her frizza and chloe not to be together and all this other nasty rude stuff well at the rugby game and everything she's supposed to be like the head like coach not head coach the, 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 the captain and stuff and she's the main team player her dad shows up only to make fun of female like rugby and stuff this is how terrible of a character he is but you know the other team is being rude to her for some reason but it's kind of like a regina george kind of thing regina george was really mean and then she played lacrosse and everything but here she plays rugby she wins it for the team big time by actually doing teamwork. This causes her teammates to come around and be nice to her and stuff. And the boy from the other school, he invites her to a party. When they go there, it turns out he is loaded rich and lives in a mansion. Everybody's having a good time. She goes to a room with him by um, herself. He starts to kiss and make out with her and she likes that at first until he tells her he recognizes her offline. Then she realizes, oh, he only wants to be with her because of those pictures. When he keeps making up where she tells him she doesn't want to do it and he should stop. But then he's all like, no, no, you'll like it and everything. And he continues and she lets him, but she doesn't want to. After that, she is very distraught because she didn't want to do it, but she froze up and didn't want to tell him no. When also her grades are bad, by the way, <laughs> and she has to repeat the school year. So when she tells Evershield that, of course, you know, the police are involved and this makes her dad come around and be nicer. And of course, that boy doesn't want to get in trouble and his dad is rich. So, of course, his dad tries to bribe her dad with $5,000. The whole school is kind of like looking at her, kind of judging her a little bit. But they also have her back. When the boys rugby team is supposed to be there, they don't want them there because that guy is there. And after... Haley disrespected her, but then found some evidence of the boy on camera talking about, ah, you know, you have to pressure them girls into doing it and they let you do it and stuff. The whole school does something unexpectedly. See, the whole school does not like her. But then once she became like a rugby, like, you know, champ, they started liking her more. But then when she was like assaulted and everything, they stood in solidarity with her and everything, putting up signs talking about, you know, just because she dresses that way is not an invitation and stuff. And they make the rugby team like go away. Now in real life, you'll never see that happening, but I like how they did that there. And the way they wrote her story arc with the assault and everything, this is the first time they've ever done like assault on like the show. And in all these seasons, I'm surprised it took them this long. And they wrote a more compelling story arc than many um, Kayleen did on the sex lives of college girls because the way they did it was just pathetic and everything. But anyway, now this is a huge debate that happened um, that to have with like a lot of people because they wrote something very realistic that happens to a lot of girls. See, Marina, she craves attention. She has daddy issues and she loves the attention from guys posting all these selfies, which a lot of girls nowadays do. And they never stop to think that, hey, you know, these guys are not respecting you. They just want one thing from you. And she even has that debate with like Frizza. Her and Frizza come around after this. After this, her and Frizza become like best buds and stuff. And the whole school starts being nice to her. And she's a lot nicer to other people. It's sad that this assault had to cause her character to change, to be nice. And no other reason. But like... Um, her and Frizza have this debate, like she was saying, it's a debate that a lot of people have, like, you know, 
just because you dress a certain way doesn't mean people should start touching you and this and that, which is a, a, a true thing. Like just because somebody dresses one way, it's their body and how they want to look. And that doesn't give nobody the invitation to start doing stuff with them. But at that same time, the way she dresses and the way she poses in her young age, she is giving off a bad signal and stuff. And the thing is, in her mind, she doesn't stop to think that all these horny guys only have one thing in mind and they're going to take advantage of her. And that's something a lot of people need to tell a lot of these young girls, you know, like this, like, you know, it doesn't give a dude the invite, but you are putting out the wrong message. Kind of like Miley Cyrus. Ever since she did the whole wrecking ball thing, dressed all hoochie mama and started licking everything, that's all people think about her now. And she's kind of disappeared from the spotlight. And every time she keeps getting brought up, everybody keeps talking about, oh, it's the wrecking girl who licks everything. And no matter what she does, good or bad, that's the only thing they bring up because that is the image she wanted people to see her as and stuff. And people do not respect her because of that. And so that is like a, this is one of those things that really makes you think, you know? And so, yeah. I was really worried going into this season because of the way season four was. They tried to shake things up and be fresh and everything because they knew they was gutting their entire cast of a lot of the main characters from the other seasons and stuff. But this season was very refreshing. It went back to the old format. They went back to their roots. And it's what they should have did in season four. And the weird thing is, even with this short run time, they still managed to fit a lot in these episodes, which they were not able to do in season four. Sadly, like I said before, the damage was done with season four. And probably a lot of people didn't come back for season five. That's normally how a lot of things are when a show um, um, puts people off, you know? And it's quite a shame. If they would have made this season into season four, oh, this show would have still been on by now. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.